we have him on every single Wednesday, or a couple of times it's been Thursday, but it's normally Wednesday around this time, ARU Andy Raymond Unfiltered. He joins us again, and may I say, you're going to the final, you're going to the final, la 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 la. Congratulations, mate. It's like my sporting Viagra, really. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Let's let's go back to the final whistle. Then, did you did you jump? Did you leap? Did you cry? Did you scream? What did you do when the eels won uh, against yeah, the Cowboys? Are, there, there were a few, few tears and a bit of a bit of amazement. Uh, reality settings, a bit of uh, few tears. Actually, we're, we're talking about this recently, and sport whatever the sport is just such an amazing thing isn't it that it can stir up emotions that nothing else can if if you don't like sport i don't know what you cheer about in life i don't know what you you know apart from you know family milestones etc that but day to day what what would what would tickle your, your fancy what would float your boat uh well nothing and, mate and nothing look, I'm, look, look, I'm gonna see look, i'm <laughs> My life is so sad. My my emotions are completely connected to my stupid sports teams. I don't look. Otherwise, I'm just a puddle. I don't. There is nothing else there, Andy. I mean, look. I, no. I, I, look. I wake up. I lived. I, my stupid commanders slash Redskins lost on Monday. I sat there and I watched it. Just miserable. I got up at six o'clock in the morning. Miserable. Just miserable. I moped around all day. I went and got a coffee. I snarled at the person behind the thing. Oh yeah, I'm flat white or something. But well, what's wrong? Nothing. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what I was like. I'm pathetic, mate. That's that's um, that's just being a bloke. See, what happens from a very young age, we pick a sporting team to support and then for the next 35 years, they disappoint us. <laughs> Whereas what women do is women pick a man and then that man disappoints them for 35 years. Exactly right. That's, a, that's the answer, people. That, Eels versus Penrith, though. Okay, is, there, is, it, is, it, is it better to... I don't know, lose in a grand final or lose before the grand final? I know it's a dumb question. I mean, you, you know, people always say, oh, it's good, at least you got to the grand final. Bugger that, mate. Bugger that. I don't want to die there. You know what I mean? No, you, you, you don't want to collapse anywhere. Um, as a para fan, I'm delighted that we've made it. And I think as a result, 2022 is a pass mark. Um, and anything on top of that, uh, you know, if the miracle happens on on Sunday, even better. Um, well, well, listen to you. You're trying out. to guard yourself against her leaving you again. This is what it is. Is how never made. Just say it. You're going to win the yeah, game. No, I'm petrified. <laughs> I, I, I would. I would. I would. <laughs> I would rather go. I would rather lose the grand final than not make the grand final there. You don't believe a word of it, mate. This is the whole thing. What you do? Look, tell me about the superstitions. Every you know, you've got your favourite underpants. The socks are over there. You did the washing this way last time. I know what you do. You you are trying to invent things that you think are going to help you win the game, aren't you? Well, that's also what blokes do, isn't it? <laughs> of course it is, mate. Yeah, we we spend we spend our life uh, trying to figure out what might happen, what mightn't happen, and then guard against potentially yes. what's in the crystal ball. Oh. And then, look, but the, this is the whole thing about it. This is what I love about sport more than anything else because everything else in our lives is so just smothered and suffocated by PR fluff and guff and yeah. communications. I mean, at least the sheer rawness of the emotion. And the great thing I love about the NRL finals more than anything is the knockout games, the games where it all ends. And there's... There's, there's, there's no middle ground to be. You're either absolutely yeah. elated or totally deflated. Yeah, there is. That's exactly right. There's no middle ground. Half the people watching uh, have had the night of their life. Half, the other half, uh, you know, they want to curl up in a ball and not be seen for for three weeks. It is brilliant theatre, isn't it? Oh, it's and brilliant. It, you know, a World Cup is like that. A, a, a rugby World Cup or a cricket World Cup, where you reach the quarter final stage, and it doesn't matter what the stats say or what history suggests. If you lose that one game, you're gone. And, and I think that's where the World Cup, whatever the sport, is really able to grab us and, and, and interest us and get us going and charge our emotions uh, when, when one survives and one dies. That's, Andy Raymond Unfiltered is the man's podcast. And this is the other thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is how absolutely just unwound we are as a species, us men. You can win, and I know that you went through Parramatta's wins in, in the 80s, two, three, four, and six. 
Yep. Those ones you remember, and you remember like, you know, I mean, mum gave me a beautiful Christmas present. It's the defeats that carve. It's those that wound the heart. It's those, the losses you never forget, do you? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And I remember 01 and 09, um, you know, sadly, very, very clearly. And they were the two that Parramatta most recently lost. And both of them, we went in as favourite and, and should have done our thing. They were they were devastating losses. But again, being blokes, you remember the tougher times, not the better times. And yeah, they, they certainly ring clear in my mind. You weren't the, the favourite in 09. What, what favorite? Come on, mate. I mean, please, you were eighth, weren't you? You're lucky to get there. Uh, I think with the betting, once it all... Uh, once kickoff came, mm. because Parramatta and Jared Hayne were on that roll. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the Hayne playing. Melbourne, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Melbourne had a had a, a late injury or a suspension the week before. Uh, I may be wrong, but I, I thought Parramatta were favourites in both those grand finals. We've got Nathan Hindmarsh on the show on Friday, Heine, and 330 games for the Eels. I was talking to him earlier this afternoon, just getting it all organised and that, and I mentioned that I was going to be talking to you. He said, I love the bloke, mate. I love the bloke. <laughs> he's uh, he's a beauty in Hind Marsh, uh, and a guy. He'll ride every emotion uh, from wherever he's watching or wherever he's sitting. He'll ride every emotion. He would be the most annoying bloke to sit next to for the grand final because, despite his relaxed demeanour, right. he is all in Parramatta Eels. Yeah. He, you will not meet a um, a more dedicated or passionate clubman. It's uh, it's actually a real credit to him. We spoke for seven minutes so far just about this, and the game's even on Sunday, and I know that it's the only thing on your mind up until then. And when you're at home and that, you're wandering around and, and somebody asks you to do something and that you don't answer, and they're going, are you, are you away? Andy, are you there? No, I'm not there because my <laughs> mind's up. There. See, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth, aren't I? I know you. Exactly, mate. I... Um yeah, I'm, I'm already starting to get into my own little Disneyland world, yep. uh, which, which is fabulous because uh, I can actually use it as an excuse. <laughs> a couple of other topics. I normally get... wander around in my own little my own little state, mate, but this, this time I can use Parramatta as an excuse. A couple of other topics we've got to do before we get out of here. Um, Daily Telegraph today, sat Dave Rennie all over the da- Daily Telegraph. I t- what, there was only a week or so ago in Melbourne and Bernard Foley, kick it out, mate! If he had kicked it out, they'd be calling the Rennie a genius. Well, I mean, how fickle is this? I mean, and also, being, yeah. being the Australian rugby coach, I mean, you know, you, surely you've got to lower the bar a little, don't you, for him? I was absolutely stunned when I saw that article this morning and exactly what you just said. Um, had of one decision been different, had his team been a little smarter, um, you know, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I, I think it, it, it's really difficult on coaches, mate, the, the fact that one decision that's effectively out of their hands can all of a sudden mean there's a headline, get rid of this bloke. I I, I think that's clickbait. I really do. Okay. Um, I, I, I think it's disappointing too. I really do. There, there's a human element to all this, and I know it's results-driven, and any sport is results-driven, and it all goes back to the coach. But I, I think this is a tough call. In fact, I think it's a, a poor call. Yeah, good I call. really do. Yeah, look, I like, I, like you hear, I like hearing you say that because, you know, I know that, um, you know, sure, you can stack his results against any other coach, and you can say percentages this and percentages that. You've got yep. to put the perspective on it of the injuries that he's got. He also, look, I mean, you know, he goes down the cattle yards, mate. The first three pens full of the prime beasts, he doesn't even get to look at. They're AFL, they're NRL, they're all the other sports. He goes over to this way where there's a few still, there's a few stragglers, there's a few tatty ones, there's a few old timers, and you're thinking, oh, God, there's a couple of mutton dressed up as lamb as well. That's what he's got to choose from, mate. Mate, you're exactly right, and that's often overlooked because rugby... Pardon me. I guess over the last 25, make it 30 years, has dropped the ball big time over here in terms of pathway systems, in terms of attracting talented young men to walk the entire path with the 15-a-side game. A lot of them start as, as very talented you know, young athletes and young rugby athletes, 
but then they're lured by the rugby league, by their pathways, by their dreams. And you're right, he doesn't get to look at the first or the second cattle yard. He right. goes down to the third one so, and, uh, and there's some strugglers. Got to tell you over here, big news in the league front is that Vodafone are changing their name to One New Zealand. And so the Vodafone... Yes. War, yeah. So they're now going to begin... And the, look, the jokes have already started. 1-6 I lost bet. 18 Warriors. See, I love that. I mean, that's, that's, that's great, isn't it? I mean, that's... <laughs> Ah. But the Cameron's Planet it. Cameron George Planet Cameron's come out and said, "Oh, this is just going to really enhance the club." For God's sake, mate! How does a name change from the sponsor do anything? Front row, kicking game, tackling, want to wear the jersey, getting up another. I oh, just, I mean, it's just so frustrating. That is frustrating when the when Cameron comes out and says, you know, something like that. Because the fact of the matter is, it doesn't doesn't add to the scoreboard, mate. Doesn't, it doesn't make doesn't the boat do go anything. faster. It doesn't do jack, mate. No, you're exactly right. Um, but, but, you know, the jokes will be around, let's go, Warriors, let's go on, Warriors, yep. let's one, Warriors. Yep. Um, that will continue. Mate, I would like, before we move on, I would like to take you to a little snippet that I saw. It, we're talking about rugby, and, and the great Eddie Jones has gone and spent time with the United States Navy SEALs yep. in San Diego uh, to gain a better appreciation for working under pressure, coping with the unexpected, and he used as the basis of his study uh, referencing Operation Neptune Spear, which was when the U.S. government... Um, Assassinated Osama, that's what they did, yeah. killed yeah. Osama bin Laden. Yeah. Um, I'm all for lateral thinking, but wow. Yeah, it's a... Where, oof, where oof. is sport <laughs> going and <laughs> what's happening in Eddie's mind? How do you connect those dots? I'm afraid, what, we're flying Black Hawk helicopters into a foreign land where the jet fighters could shoot us down to kill a guy that is a terrorist leader. Somehow that connects with a rugby team in a dressing room about to play a World Cup match. Oh, I don't know. I can't... Those dots are way too much for me, mate. Way too much for me too, buddy. Way too much for me. Man Cad, are you in favour of or not? We've already had our white friends, Captain Sophie Devine, come out today and she says, we're not going to use it. Man Cad, Woman Cad, Them Cad, They Cad, whatever it is. Mate, I just think if you're cribbing and you're cheating, I mean, I, I, I'm not even going to give you one warning. I might be gracious enough to say, listen, if you want to go down that end of the pitch, go down that end of the pitch yep. and I'll run your mate out. Either, either that or stay in your goddamn crease or else you're out. Simple as that. Is it illegal? The answer is no. Is it unethical? That's, a, that's an interpretation. That's an opinion. I actually heard and found out earlier in the week why they call it that. Mancap was the first person to actually do that. Yeah, but it was Brown. Uh, was, the guy called Brown was the guy that was doing it. It should be called the Brown, mate. The Brown? It yeah. doesn't have the same ring, yeah, it surely. It doesn't. Oh, okay. no, I mean, yeah. You're not going to attract sponsors to the Brown. <laughs> On the podcast this week, ARU, Andy Raymond Unfiltered, who we got? Mate, we've got uh, a two-part grand final special, speaking to Gordon Tallis, Greg Alexander, uh, Adrian Morley, Luke Lewis, Brett Kenny, Stacey Jones, Anthony yes. Minicello. There's a whole heap of them just uh, giving recollections of their grand final experiences, both good and bad. It's, uh, it's a pretty unique look. Have you allowed yourself finally just the the just the s smallest smidgen of a dream of what it might feel like when you're begging the ref to blow that whistle and you've got a lead and you're thinking, my God, we've done it, we've won it. Oh, there goes that Viagra thing again. Um, yeah, uh, dare to dream, absolutely dare to dream. I wouldn't be a sports fan if I didn't. All the very best of luck. We'll be thinking about you this weekend. Look forward to catching up next week, mate. Can't wait, buddy. Andy Raymond, unfiltered, joins us on Wednesdays around about 20 to 4. He's a massive, lifelong Parramatta fan.